Okay, this video is about using the triangle method for rearranging equations in GCSE Physics. And uh, the first question we need to answer is which equations does it work for? Well, pretty much all of them is the answer. Um, there are a couple that require a little bit more complicated use of the technique, which uh, we'll deal with in a separate video. But basically, it's any equations which fit two particular patterns. The first of these is when you've got something is equal to two things multiplied together. So, for example, energy equals power times time. Um, that Anything with that form will work, no matter what the things are. And the second form is anything where you have um, something equals to one thing divided by another. So similar, except with a division sign. And of course, you'll see that written with a division sign and as one quantity over another. So the classic example there is speed equals distance over time. So, how do you make the triangles? That's the first thing to answer. Um, well, you look at your equation, and you identify which type it is. So if it's a multiplies equation, then what happens is the two quantities that are multiplied together go into the bottom of the triangle, and the remaining quantity, which is on its own on one side of the equation, goes into the top. And it doesn't matter which order you have the two things in the bottom of the triangle. They can be either way around. So it could be time on the left and power on the right. That will still work. So, if you've got a division in your equation, then it's slightly different. Whatever is on top of the division sign, or on top of the fraction, is going to go in the top of the pyramid. So, top to top. And the remaining two quantities go into the bottom of the pyramid. Again, doesn't matter which way around, could have been the other way, and it will still work. So that's how you form the triangles you need to use this technique. Then the question becomes, well, how do I use it? Well, whenever you get a problem in a physics paper with a equation, they will always give you two of the quantities you need and ask you to find the third, if it's an equation involving three things. Now, that could be they just write down the numbers for the things you need, or it could be they ask you to read it from a graph. Um, but however they give the information to you, you will get two values and find the third one. Now, that's easy if you're trying to find um, something that's what we call the subject of the equation, the thing that's on its own in the equation. For example, speed is the subject of this equation here, speed equals distance over time. So if you were given the distance, 200 meters, and the time, 50 seconds, then it's fairly straightforward to put them into the equation. The 200 meters goes in where the distance is, and the 50 seconds goes in where the time is, and you just do the calculation. A very fast walk there, at 4 meters per second, but still. Um, that's relatively straightforward. Okay, So the triangle comes in useful when you don't get asked for speed, if you got asked for distance or time. So let's see how that works. Um, so if we were asked for distance or time in that previous example, then how do we do it? Well, we look at the triangle, and what we do is we cover up the thing we're interested in. So in this particular case, if we're interested in finding distance, I'm going to grey it out there, we've covered the distance up, and whatever is left will give you the equation for distance. So the speed t multiplied by the time is what's left this time, so we take that out, and then distance is just equal to that. You cover up what you're interested in, and the remaining things in the triangle give you the equation to find that quantity. Okay. So, to check that you've understood that, just have a look at this now again and try and work out what the equation for time is using the triangle. Pause the video while you do that and we'll check afterwards. Okay, so hopefully you covered up time and that left you with distance on the top and speed on the bottom and, and this little line here forms the division and you can see that time is going to equal distance divided by speed in this case. Okay straightforward hopefully. So um, just, just recap the process before we go on and do a little tiny bit more practice to check you're okay with it. So first of all check if your equation uses multiply or divide. Make the equation into a triangle using one of the two methods depending on if it's multiply or divide. Cover up the thing you're trying to find in the triangle and whatever's left will give you the equation for that quantity. So there's your four steps. Now obviously you then have to substitute the numbers that you have into that equation, that's really a separate process, we're just dealing with the rearranging here. And there are usually separate marks for this in the paper, there's usually at least one mark in a multi-mark calculation question for rearranging if it's needed. Okay, so here are four other equations, uh, three in fact, one, one of them twice to find the different quantities in it. 
um, for you to practice on. And another thing to realize here is that even if you don't know what the things in the equation are, if you've forgotten what the things in an equation are and it's given to you in the paper, you can still use this technique. It doesn't matter. So try and answer the questions and pause the video while you do that and we'll check the answers afterwards. Okay, so let's look at the first one. mg equals power times time. Find the equation for power. Well, there's our triangle. The power times time goes on the bottom. We're interested in power, so we blank that one out, and it leaves us with energy divided by time. So there's our equation. And we put our numbers for energy and time in there. Second one, work equals force times distance. Very similar. The force times distance goes on the bottom because it's a multiply type. And we get work divided by force for our distance. Okay. Third and fourth questions, same equation but asking for different quantities. Because they're division equations, the voltage will end up on the top of the triangle and resistance and current on the bottom. So in the first case, it asks you to find the equation for voltage. We blank the voltage out and that leaves resistance multiplied by current. So there's our equation. And in the second case, we blank out the current, same triangle obviously, and then we get voltage divided by resistance. So there is our final equation. Well worth learning this technique, it will probably save you time if your maths is a bit shaky, and it should gain you marks as well. Thank you for listening.